Hey guys, Gast here um, with a, another podcast. It's been a week now. Um, I've been t- desperately trying to find somewhere to go to uh, record. Um, and it's been an adventure to say the least. I thought I found a spot, but then I realized that room was awful. The acoustics were shit. It was a completely huge room. Um, everything was echoey and I couldn't do anything. It was just totally brutal. Um, so I decided to just say fuck it and just start recording here again in the room, um, and just kind of hope that it wouldn't bother anyone. (laughs) A lot of the, a lot of the people around me are in class right now, so it's all good. Um, so hopefully that doesn't really get in the way of anything. But at this point, um, I need the money, and um, I'm like just scraping by with student loans for this final year. So, um, if anything, uh, getting any extra cash at any possible moment is the most important thing to me at this point. So, um, just for that sake, I might be doing this more often than I usually do, trying to find just time between class and stuff like that. My mornings are really open, so that's never really a problem. So that's good. And uh, my schedule is really like open in the morning, so I can kind of just go to class and then come back and then record some stuff and then get back out there. <clears throat> it's all good though. So, um, yeah, there's a couple announcements. Um, FEE3 is starting in October, and I'm gonna make another video, just an announcement, just aside from that. Um, I've been working. I've been. I haven't. We've been. Uh, I've been talking with Mangs and Snake Mom. If you know her, she streams just about um, the planning for FEE3 2016. There's not a lot of submissions this year, which is kind of, sh- which is like, it's okay because it's like, I guess, less work. Um, and I guess there's more spotlight on on projects that want to be spotlighted, but I'm a little surprised that uh, there's not a lot of big projects coming this year. Um, it doesn't seem like that that way. Usually they kind of just spurt out out of nowhere towards the end. Hopefully that's going to be the same thing. Otherwise, that would be kind of, you know, it'd be kind of unfortunate because um, Serenius Forest is going to be um, actually helping. Like the, the site themselves is actually going to be helping with the advertisement of that, um, which is going to be fantastic if it's going to be site wide then it would be, um, you know, pretty, pretty big traffic. And, you know, this channel has gotten to a point where I feel like we can, at, like I can single-handedly not to sound brag or anything, but at least get like 3000 views on, um, on a single video. And that's like the most amount of views <laughs> than like it took a year for like the last year at V3. There were a few problems with last year's at V3, um, just in regards to, um, you know how it was you know how how everything kind of was really concentrated in two days and um it kind of was the realization was for that was um that uh it was just too much saturated like it was like i feel like like mangs brought it up but just getting oversaturated with content and within the span of two days just kind of seemed overwhelming and i guess and in hindsight it makes total sense so this year what we're doing is um well, I guess I'll make a separate video just explaining what FE3 is because I'm sure there's a lot of new subscribers that don't know what I'm talking about. So I'll do a separate video for that. Uh, just like a five minute thing with some uh, footage of FE3 from last year playing. But that's probably what I'm just doing from for that. Uh, what I want to talk about today is chapter one. Um, I, re- <clears throat> I put up a poll on my Twitter asking uh, what people like more between the podcasts and the... Um, and the let's plays and they actually voted for the let's plays more which i was kind of surprised but um there's going to be a lot of let's play content within the within october since there's going to be fee3 and mafc so that's going to be interesting um but right now um i'm just focusing more on getting through these chapters of of uh chapter one i have more time to kind of sit down and and i have the script here i've just highlighted the, the important parts um, I, this this chapter, if anything, was a little bit more memorable than the prologue, um, but not by much. It was really standard. Like for gameplay wise, it felt really standard too. It was a little bit more 
I guess challenging for lack I don't know challenging I guess to be nice about it about trying to get era um because that was kind of frustrating. It took me like one or two tries to actually get her. Um, and then getting uh, trudging through that giant forest is kind of annoying. But let's uh, let's look at this. Let's look at the writing first. Um, so Verdane is covered in thick forest, and King Batu uh, ceased the fighting, and then they kind of had a maintaining peace with Grand Bell, um, and then pacifying the zealous sons so Gandalf Jamka or Jamki and um, Kinbois uh, who are the princes who ruled over Verdane and then uh, Adin, Adin was Ad, Adin was taken and in Verdane there's the spirit forest which I find is kind of weird I don't know it seems like Verdane. I understand that since Verdane is very thick with forestry, that this that the that the spirit forest would also be in Verdane. But I don't know. It seems kind of weird how like these are barbarians and they are totally like they're visibly ruthless and they're like they're like it's it's obvious that these guys are like barbaric. But they but there's this forest that's like closed off. I feel like I mean Deidre and like random villagers can go seem to be able to go to and fro from the village to the rest of Verdane so it's like I don't kind of understand how this village or how the secret village is like alive at this point if Verdane is kind of barbaric as fuck and I don't know it doesn't really seem like a secret forest that people can just like walk in and out maybe I'm reading this wrong and maybe I misinterpreted like the the lore of the forest but it just keeps, seems a little strange that the secret forest would have Verdane in it or Verdane would have a secret forest with like a bunch of like mystical lore behind it in like this barbaric area. Um, El Elchan. Oh, he's Eldigan now. These translations are confusing. He's Eldigan now. So, so Eldigan and Sigurd have like a bro moment. Uh, let's scroll down some more. And Jamki lets Adin free with Du, and Du is already in prison, but Adin, but Jamki left, let her go anyway. Uh, Jamki says, "I can't go against my father, even with all the mayhem my brothers are causing. I'm going to Verdane to see my father. I have to get him to see the wrong in all this." So he turns against him, even though he kind of betrays his father anyway. But he obviously knows something's up with 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 Daddy with Daddy Verdane here. Uh, Shannon and Sigurd and Aira, they do their thing. Um, Aira joins because Shannon was, like, held hostage or something. Uh, let's scroll down some more. So Elliot, who is, um, he's with, uh, Eldigan's crew. And he is, he tries to take Evan's castle and then Eldigan's like, what are you doing? And then they fight each other. Don't you realize you're running in direct violation to our superior's orders? The Reverend King Augusti has no desire to wage war against Granbell. And they fight. And uh, Elliot flees because he gets overwhelmed by the Cross Knights. No, I'm fine. Thank you very much, Sigurd. Um, and so this is uh, Conquering Marfa. So Deirdre... This is this is I'm I'm lukewarm about the whole love at first sight thing with Deirdre and Sigurd. I under like okay I understand how Fe four logic kind of works with it. Um. So it's love at first sight, uh, and the man in the village was like, "Haha, even a man of your caliber falls readily yeah, readily for a pretty woman. Perhaps it's love at first sight." And then uh, Sigurd's like, "There's something about her." And then he's like, the villagers of the spirit forest do not involve themselves with the outside world. Moreover, that girl you are so fond of is strictly forbidden from associating with men. The villagers believe a great catastrophe will befall us if that were ever violated. I'll get right to the point, Sigurd. Resign yourself of that girl. Um, so he's just like, fuck it. No, <laughs> I want to get with her. Um, so that's what he does. <laughs> Uh, 
And then, meanwhile, I guess after that happens, uh, Jamki is back in the castle, and Sandima is just like telling him to fight against Sigurd. And then Sandima kills Batu, and then Archbishop Manfred comes. And this is where I think the plot really starts to unravel. It's because Manfroy is like... So I'm just going to use the translation from the site because I don't actually have... Uh, I didn't actually remember what it was in the new translation, but Manfroy says, well, how about the Lop Lopusian blood link? Uh, have you located Sigurn's daughter yet? Sigurn. You imbecile. Well, that boy Sigurn's son is in Bahara at the moment. He is of no use to us without the girl. Allow me to explain. Sigyn is the descendant of Prince Myra. The Laptu, the Laputo. Is that Laptir? I don't know which one's Laptir and what's... I think Laptir is Laputo. The Laptir Emperor's younger brother. In short, Sigyn was the only surviving descendant of the Laptir clan. Now Sigyn broke the Myra decree by bearing two children. Follow me, Sandama. Yes, by uniting the blood of her offspring, the Dark Lord... La, La Putusu <laughs> she'll be revived okay so basically um, they're trying to find the two siblings to make them mate and then revive the Dark Lord this is super I don't know this seems really generic like the mo like super like Fire Emblem storytelling at this point like the rise of the Dark Lord <laughs> with a twist of incest and they must awaken the dark lord at any cost so i'm pretty sure sigyn's daughter is D deirdre i think that's the point they're trying to make here and that's why deirdre is being chased um so then when they're in the village and uh no S deirdre finds sigurd and then they talk and then deirdre if sandama is alive gives just has a silent staff because fuck it <laughs> Maybe there's some weird lore. Maybe you can like hand wave it being like, well, maybe if there's like some outside villager that no, I can't even. I can't even make an excuse for that. She just has a silent staff because she has to. Um Is this when he's if yeah, you can apparently kill Sandima before Sigurd talks to Deirdre? I didn't know that. I guess yeah, I'm not sure how that even works, to be honest. How do you kill Sandima before you get Deirdre? How is that even possible? I don't know. Well, all I know is that it, that the woman who raised me told her on her deathbed. She said there exists a world, a religious sect who follow the Dark Lord Laputusu. I can't pronounce that. I'm going to say Lopt. Fuck it. I'm just going to say Lopt for now until someone says what it actually is. Or if I just reread it in game, which I probably will. The Dark Lord was presumed dead, but they've been secretly planning his resurrection. In secret. The Dark Lord lies dormant with my blood. Here we go. So she's one of the daughters. Through me, through me, they can resurrect him. I was told they must never find me. I am also forbidden to be with a man. Um, so I'm assuming why maybe she's forbidden to be with a guy is not just because it's like a plot thing but maybe because like if she like has a child and that child is also viable for the resurrection and that kind of just adds more to, like more layers to the issue so maybe that's why um and then uh they talk about how they love each other at first sight so then they fell in love um and i think that's it and then i missed the event with lex's axe i did i missed that and the rest is just conversations uh is there an ending event here no, I think that's pretty much it. They take over, they take Verdane back, and uh, Jom, Jomki comes with you, and Adin is here, um, and then they continue on in chapter two. Um, so this is sort of like an unraveling of the story, I suppose, and they're kind of giving you like the whole sort of mid, like a, a bit of the background of um, um, the uh, the bad guys who are trying to resurrect the thing. So Deirdre. I suppose I suppose they were looking for the the, the guys because they were looking for the son and they have the and Sigurd has the daughter now. Or sorry, Sigurd yeah, Sigurd has Deirdre now. So I guess that's like kind of bad for them. But Sigurd doesn't give a shit. He's like, fuck your the history of your people. 
I want to bang. And that's what he's doing. It sounds uh, pretty pretty simple and pretty like like um resurrecting the door. it just seems like a very a very um at, at right now it seems kind of like a simple a simple story it's like it gives you a really basic backdrop like nothing actually happened yet but i find it kind of i don't know i i i don't really have an opinion so far on the story yet nothing's really like unraveling or nothing really like extreme or climactic has happened so far so i can't really say anything um but i will say that the whole love at first sight thing. This is something that I feel like a lot of people have a problem with. And I used to have a problem because I, I knew about the, the how they fell in love with each other. And for me, it's it's not a huge deal because the way I think of FE, the way I imagine like FE4 happening is that I think I'd mentioned this in um, one of the podcasts. Yeah, I did. I might have mentioned it in the, in the chapters in the prologue video, but the way I look at FE4 is that one chapter is a huge war. It's, it's you know, like chapter one is in Verdane. It's taking over all of, it's fighting all of Verdane. Um, and so that doesn't take place over the span of an hour. It takes place over potentially days. Um, and, you know, if you, days to weeks, um, stuff like that. And it doesn't really come off like that because it's just a streamlined kind of experience. And there's a lot of time skips that are just implied that happen. Um, nothing happens sort of directly after another. Like every time you conquer a castle, I imagine, you know, there's this a time skip between months and months before something else happens. They just kind of gloss over it um, and they just kind of keep going. Um, and when and what and when uh, Deirdre meets Sigurd and then she leaves, I imagine that there's at least a week or two of just time between then and now when they're traveling through and when they're traveling to Verdane and trying to get there. I imagine that's what's actually happening right now. So when she says, I couldn't stop thinking about you, it wasn't like five turns later, they're in love. It's like over the, over the span of that time skip, they actually fall in love with each other. And in that way, I understand. And I can, and I can, I can, I can, I can like accept the whole like love at first sight cliche thing. That being said, it's still kind of cliche um it's it is really cliche actually but when i think of it like that it's not as bad and i can actually just be cool with it i don't i never really had a problem with it And stuff happened which is nice but in terms of gameplay it was sort of similar but it was kind of bullshit at some points in my opinion the first part um, when you're actually learning about um, oh I can actually uh, can I actually just place this here there's the uh, I, rec I have like dimensions on the recording and I want to see if I can actually just like have the map that would be cool that would be a nice way of actually doing this if I can just adjust the thing here can I turn this status bar uh does that work oh sweet does it hey um not quite if I just do this oh now it's way too small oh I don't know if I can do this okay I'm gonna try to Oh, here's the problem. If I go like that, um, and I go like this, this is gonna look really weird. Um, fuck. <laughs> I'm gonna ruin the map. Oh god. Um, actually, you know what? Let's just do this. Um, is this the normal size? This is normal. Okay, well, you can see the screen, so that's fine. We'll do with that. So you start here, um, right here. I'm actually going to make this bigger. So you start right here. Um, the arena is something I kind of didn't like at first, but then I sort of liked it. The lack of trading, um, and I had... Oh, man, how, where do we even start with talking about this mechanic? 
fuck there's like so much like new shit and like okay i'll start with the arena so in this game the arena everyone can fight in the arena and it's like a set amount of enemies that you fight and every time you beat an enemy you get experience and gold like a normal arena but if you die you just get sent you just get back to one health and you don't lose any money and then um you have to get healed or you can stay in the castle to regenerate your health and then try again also in the castle there's uh, a pawn shop where this is the only way you can exchange items and i find this probably one of the most annoying parts about this game is the lack of trading um but it actually like thinking optimistically there's also another layer to like the lack of trading i find it cool how even if you can't trade and the only way you can trade is to sell something in the pawn shop where then the people the person you want to give the item to has to buy it from the pawn shop i find that's clunky but i like the idea of strategizing who you have to get the kill to who gets the item you know what i mean like one of the items was a defense ring or a barrier ring and I had to, oh no, a silver, a silver spear. That's more, that's a more easy uh, reference to make. So one of the, I think it was Elliot actually who had the silver spear and I wanted Finn to get the kill. So I actually had to like just work around fighting Elliot by hit and run and, and chopping his HP down until the point where Finn can actually get the kill and then he secured the silver lance. I think that's kind of an interesting thing to do. Um, like a non-tradable item that can only be picked up and not and only be taken by that guy um and it could only be like sold to be exchanged i thought that was an interesting way to strategize around who you're going to get the kill um in that light i i can forgive the lack of trading trading was never a thing yet so um obviously they were still in the early days of fire emblem design where trading wasn't a thing and doubling and doubling wasn't a thing either no, that's not true. Pretty sure FE2 did doubling. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, yeah. That's... I'm, I'm mixed. I'm At this point, since there's not a lot of droppable items anyway, and, you know, it's not like... Every, you, it's, there's, not like there's not like a lot of trading that would be involved if trading was in the game. So, in that light... It's not really a big deal. Also, you get a fuck ton of gold. You can give a bunch of gold. Like, you can give gold and then get the money back from the arena or something like that. So gold isn't really an issue in this game because there's so much of it. Um, and you can get so much really easily. Well, I've only been on Chapter 2, so, you know, maybe it's maybe it's worse. Um, so in that respect, it's not that bad. What else is in this what else is in here i don't really understand the fortune teller that much yet um i know that uh Antonin told me that the way relationships work here is you stand next to them so it's like they gain support points and they also have special talk conversations which raises their supports and anyone can get with anyone which is interesting um that's not really that's never really been an aspect that i was really like fixed in on fire emblem so it's like it's an it's like it's cool for me i suppose it's not like a bad thing it's um it's whatever it's something you have to look up which is something i don't really i i mean like i had to look up a lot of things for gaiden and i still really liked gaiden so i can't really peg that as a thing on fe4 if i'm gonna like be okay with it in gaiden because then i then i just have to be fair on all sides and say gaiden was stupidly cryptic and it was really frustrating trying to figure out everything without a guide same thing with fe4 <laughs> but i mean like i just really i'm just a gaiden fanboy but realistically gaiden is a really like it's a rough game it's a really rough game like it's so it's easy to imagine why people wouldn't like that game anyway there's the pawn shop the armory the fortune teller the arena the village i think that is just it um yeah, that's mostly it. So I did that for all the arenas that I could, and I got everyone a bunch of gold and stuff. So then we traveled down here, and then I think there were bandits here and uh, here. You can't see the full map, but you see most of it. Oh, there's one guy here. The churches are interesting here. The churches are interesting in this game. Uh, because the way it works is you get regenerate, like you regenerate health, and but it costs you money. So, you know, money is money is being used as another sort of resource in this game which i which i like because um in a lot of fe games i feel like money is not really it's it's purely used for money and nothing else 
So it, that's not a bad thing because money's money, right? But um, it's cool how they decided to try to change it up and have churches steal your money for healing, which is kind of funny because that's what happens in real life where a lot of money gets donated to churches. <laughs> I don't know. I thought, I thought that was kind of funny. Um, so what else happens? You go down here. There's bad guys that come up here. And Aira is here. And Aira's like Aira's a tough part of this chapter because for me, um, I was rushing. I was rushing down from the castle. And it comes and I think it's like it's an area event that happens like right here or something. Where if you enter this spot, Aira changes her AI and gets aggressive. And the first time I did this, I was actually like I didn't know how to get Aira, so I thought I could just talk to her with Sigurd, but you actually have to seize the castle first. And I was like, how the fuck do I do that? So I was playing like, I was playing like, I was getting myself, I was like luring her out of the way to try to like make room for Sigurd to get in, kill the boss here, and then actually seize it, and then get him to talk back to to her, wherever she was. This is just a mess of arrows. I feel like I'm in Cod Academy if I was like ripped on cocaine or something. Did you ever watch Khan Academy where it was like, teaching you how to do like maths and science and stuff and he just has a bunch of colors and shit like that and I'm just like I'm using red with arrows everywhere I'd make a terrible tutor I'd make a terrible tutor but that's besides the point so yeah getting Aira is hard um so what I did was I think it was in my second run through um oh I first actually killed the boss because what the what the commanders do is that every time there's like a squadron there's like the boss and then if the boss is like overwhelmed he'll run back and get more enemies so it gives you an incentive to kill the boss as soon as possible um, and cutting through the goons, which I, I, I can deal with. I'm not, I'm, I don't really care. It's, not a, it's okay for me. It's just another sort of layer of the FE4 strategy. So for me, it's not really a big deal. So I had to kill him first, and then um, I just pretty much had to like bait her with and get her to attack Lex or anyone who was stocky enough to take a hit or two, and but have them like around. So when Sigurd got the kill, who is he's easy to get kills because he's Sigurd and he's like the best unit ever. He gets the kill, he seizes it, and then he gets to Aira. Meanwhile, over here, this is where Du and Aiden and Adin were. The first time I played this and the second time I played this, I forgot to move them, and then they were getting chased. And thankfully, they didn't get uh, killed because because they both have really high avoid and especially in the forests it's basically like if you forget them for a turn they're at risk of dying so you have to make sure they're always moving up um and then i think i sort of had like a choke point here with madir and the other calves just here just baiting them and making sure adin and do get to safety um when that happened and i conquered here um that's when Elliot comes with Eldigan and they just kind of have a thing. At first I was like, oh fuck, I have to get back or else Arden's going to die. So I had a bunch of people come up and then I realized, oh, Eldigan's going to come and kill them anyway. So then I went back down. So it was no big deal. Um, so we get here, we conquer, I forget what castle. I think this is Marfa. Is this Marfa? This is Verdant. No, this is, fuck, I don't know. <laughs> this is the border, I think. I, I don't know. I forget at this point. So anyway, we'll just keep going. We keep, we we go down more hit and run stuff. Um, the I I I I like the strategy of hit and run. I just it's just the thing about FE4 is that I I am the kind of player who like wants to sit down and get as much as he can done in like a single sitting. But FE4 is is designed in a way that you don't want to do that. So it's hard to me. It's hard for me to like get motivated to play FE4 just because it feels like. I'm discouraged to play based on my play style, which is literally just binge playing until I get physically exhausted and I actually can't go on, not because I get bored. The thing is with every force that I'm getting, like I, I find times where I get bored and I just don't want to play. Um, it gets really bad in, in chapter two though. And I think I have, I think I'm going to head to lunch after this video and I'm just going to do it. I think this is fine. I think this is fine so far, but I'm going to come back and talk about F at chapter two um, because I feel like I owe you guys more content than what I'm giving you right now. So I'm going to try to give, uh, make this, how, we've only been recording for half an hour. So I'll try to do F, I'll try to do chapter two as well. Chapter two, I fucking hated. I, chapter two was really frustrating for me. It was not a good chapter in my opinion. Um, because it, I'll get to it in a second, but ba basically what chapter two does is that it kind of like contradicts the whole reason, the whole like game play style of FE4 by backtracking. 
Because in FE4, there's so many incentives and so many reasons to rush forward and progress. But then in FE, but then in, in Chapter 2, you have to go backwards. And it's just like, it kind of ruins the entire experience for me. I don't know if it's like a, if you can call it a pacing issue, but the whole, I don't like backtracking in Fire Emblem. I feel like, you know, Fire Emblem is like really good for being a linear game with like a, a, a point A and a point B. Not a point A, a point B, then back to A, then to C. It has to be like a progressive thing. And when, it, when you have to backtrack like that, it's not really uh it's not really a positive for me. I really hope they don't do that again because it was really just just was not a fan. So anyway, you get this uh village and then you fight this guy and then after that, I think you progress forward. You meet Deirdre here. Um Jomki is over here and they're moving um or something like that. So you progress through the forest. This is kind of annoying. The forest is like a little like a little too much there's a lot of room. this is like a huge area and it's just like first of all it's big on its own and secondly you know when you when you include the forest you know the actual like distance of this thing gets actually like it feels like it goes up to here now like it feels like it gets this big because the distance is so long um so it takes a really long time it's really boring to try to trudge through these forests um, and then you you get through here. I think this path opens up or something, because you have to get to here somehow. So you get you get to here, and then you're you're you have to like. You, oh, maybe Jomki's Jomki's here. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Jomki's here, I think. And then you kind of talk to him with Sigurd or Adin or something, and then yeah, it is Adin. And then you fight the Verdunites here, and then here is where Sandama's big like spell thing is like here <laughs> and then Deirdre gives you the silence staff and basically it's just trying to find a good spot to use the silence then just rush in and kill Sandama which is really easy to do um, and then that's pretty much the chapter you yeah um, I didn't find this chapter like anything special to be honest it was chapter one you don't really expect chapter ones to be anything special to begin with for the most part, it was kind of okay. Um, it was confusing trying to get Era. It was a little tricky here. Um, rushing to get the villages is always fun. It was in, it was nice getting. Ch it feels like there's more. Like there's there's not just one objective when it comes to these kind of maps. It's like you have to seize this. You have to protect the villages. You have to get Era. You have to get Adin and her up there. You have to talk to Era with Sigurd. Um, so it's like this whole area is like this big rectangle is like its own sort of chapter and then this is the second part of it um, but it's just one of those things where like I want to just play the whole thing and I just there's so much time in between of just like no dialogue but just gameplay and it's hit and run over and over and over and over and over and just throwing cigarette at things which I mean depending on how you like to fire emblem is, is good in itself and there's also like things you do in between like um like visiting arenas and repairing your items and stuff like that yeah i didn't get lex's axe which kind of sucks but whatever um so that's chapter one yeah like i said it's okay uh, it's nothing special the story is the story is just beginning which is fine uh you know the story's not super engaging right now but whatever it's starting up and that's chapter one so thanks for uh watching um there is s and e x nine x i just i'm on chapter three at the moment <laughs> aaron's kind of cool so thanks for watching sorry listening i guess you saw my chicken scratches on my scribbles here so i'm gonna head to lunch and then chapter two will be talked about so i will catch you guys later bye bye hey we're back okay so now i'm just gonna adjust the mic here we're on chapter two that's fun not really i did not like this chapter at all let's um get started here so well uh chagall is like mobilizing against verdane slash evans slash sigurd eldigan tries to like tell him to stop and then he's like no and then he throws him in the dungeon <laughs> so basically this chapter is about uh augusty rising up against uh sigurd because Verdane was taken over and people don't like that. So Nodion gets under attack by Augusty. And I actually, because someone suggested that this would be a good idea, I actually have uh, the map here 
So we are right here. This is where we are right now. And I think it's Anthony, or it's one of here, and, and Nodion is where. Okay, so I think Eldigan is over here. Eldigan is here, and he traveled from Nodion to Augusty, and then he got captured in Augusty, and there are soldiers coming from Hirhein, I think, to Nodion. And then we have, so the first thing we have to do in this map is go from Evans to Nodion. There you go. Where Loxus is. So let's read the script here. We received a request for backup from Princess Loxus, so she's asking for Sigurd to help, and so they do. So then, since Loxus is in trouble and she's getting chased by Elliot, who wants to like steal her away, um, they basically go. Oops, hi, hi, card. <laughs> they go to um, Augusty and they start a war with them. Um, you guys are jerking me around yeah so he's basically like I'm frustrated at it seems like uh, Elliot's a huge beta because Elliot got owned by Eldo Eldigan and now he's, he, now he's going to get owned by Loxus or he wants to own Loxus both literally and figuratively And this is pretty much the story of this chapter. It's uh, Augusty rebelling against, not even rebelling. They broke. I think there's a war pact or something. They broke it between. Um, yeah, it was because the king of uh, Augusty has like peace with Evans, or Granbell, and now they're breaking it because Chagall killed his dad, and ever since he killed his dad, he's taken over because Manfroy told him to. And now they're going to try to take Verdane from Granvel and then take over Granvel and then become the strongest place ever. So that's the whole goal of Augusty and Chagall. Um, this is kind of weird. Like, you get, you can get, okay, you can get, it's not weird. Well, it is kind of weird. You get Holland from fighting in the arena, which is okay. Um, now, so after you uh, talk and get to Loxus. So she pleads for Eldigan to be rescued by Sigurd, so he does that. Um, and then Sigurd's like, I usually try to keep our troops off foreign soil, but this time it's unavoidable. I've already at received King Asmer's approval to engage the enemy. His Majesty is aware of King Imuka's assassination by Chagall's hand, as well as Chagall's plans to invade Grand Bell. His Majesty has also stressed the importance of Elchin's Eldigan's rescue for future peace negotiations. Don't worry, Loxus, I promise we'll get El 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 Eldigan out. So then they conquer, so from, let's see, this thing here. So from Nodion, they go to Herhein, and they conquer Herhein. They beat Baldo, they conquer Herhein. Uh, they fight Elliot. So I'm actually gonna try to actually incorporate both the story and the gameplay as I go together, so I don't have to split them up. That sounds kind of interesting, we can do that. Um, so after Evans, you know, you get all the arena stuff um, and whatnot. I think at this point I uh, I transferred the magic ring from Sandema to Azel, so he has a lot of magic. Um, and uh, I didn't even talk about units from last time. Okay, so right after they conquer Herhein, um, Sigurd and Oifi go to try to save the villages. Here, so they have to. I think the neutrals turn because they have to fight Macbeth now. Um. Yeah, Macbeth, my humblest apologies, your master. I'll dispatch Volts and his mercenaries immediately. So Volts and Beowulf come, and then Beowulf is like not down. 
to fight. And then Sigurd talks to a villager. No, that's Levin. Levin talks to a villager. There's mutiny in the streets, my boy. Ain't no one got time to worry about us. Tell the truth, there's a bit more to the story. Rumor has it that Lord Macbeth himself set bandits loose on our villages. What a dick. So they decide to try to kill him. And Sylvia, who's really weird, she has a really weird portrait too. It's like her shoulder's broken. I don't know. It's a really janky looking portrait. Not one of the better ones in the game, I'd say. The portraits in FE4 are kind of strange. I don't know. I feel like at the time when the an when like this anime style was like that, maybe it was like better, but I don't know. It's the faces kind of seem like not that attractive to me. Maybe it's because they're cut off and they can only show the face. I'm not really sure. It seems kind of samey too. I don't know if anyone got that similar vibe. And Sylvia's like, yeah, I like it rough, which is just weird. Sylvia's the weird character. It's kind of just weird writing in general, in my opinion. Maybe it's because it was lost in translation. When it comes to like translated games, I usually just, if it's like weird writing, I just don't really know if it's actually just genuinely weird white writing or just the translation is like not all the way there. So I can't really judge it. Um, Beowulf is weird. You just give him gold and he joins you. <laughs> and so Philat comes. I don't know. I forget what his name is in the... Maybe it is Philat because I kind of forgot it in the Naga patch. But Philat comes and he's... T and after they conquer Anthony, so now we are... Uh, we traveled and we cut through these guys and we beat Macbeth. And check this out, I did not know there was a pursuit ring for Arden. But that would require me actually using Arden <laughs> and actually getting him from Point Evans all the way to where Elliot and Philip were. So fuck that noise, that's not happening. So we catch Anthony. There's been some nasty rumors making rounds in the royal court. It's going around that Prince Quan of Leinster, King Eldotian, of Nodion and yourself are conspiring against his majesty. They say that explains why you're hiding the prince of Isaac. That's absurd. And then, so basically, do like Reptor and Langabalt, who were conspiring in Grand Bell before, uh, are trying to like screw him over. And they keep talking and they're talking about royal gossip. And, and then they started talking about this little interesting tidbit. Um, His Highness is problems of letting go a love of his past. I think he's talking about Kurth. Yeah. So Kurth basically, um, the lovely prin the lovely Duchess Veltum of Veltimer, a married woman, mind you, fell for the prince. Now the Duke of Veltimer was reputed was a reputed womanizer and had several lovers. The prince, however, was a straight arrow. So he fell in love with the Duchess, and then uh, after the Duke got pissed off and denounced the two, he killed himself. And then the Duchess disappeared, and her name is Sigyn. Is Sigyn the same girl as the mother of Deirdre? I think. Isn't that her name? I think that's what it is here. Hold on. Sigyn. Yeah, I think Sigyn is... Okay, so Sigyn... Hold on. What? <laughs> I'm I'm confused here. The Duchess would have been Lord Alvis's mother, correct? So the Ugh, oh, I'm confused. So Prince Kurth fell in love with the Duchess, who had a child with the Duke of Veltimar, who's the father of Al who's the father of Alvis? I think that's what they're saying here. But Sigyn is also the mother of Deirdre, which makes them like cousins, right? Or something? Or like half family? This is confusing. I hope there's like a family tree thing that I can follow because my god, this is like really in in it, in, it, in each other. <laughs> anyway, so Clement uh, is the guy who's in past Anthony. 
which is where are we here? We went down here. This all this all this stuff here was um, Levin and Sylvia. They took care of that. And Beowulf and Volts, they traveled over here, and we killed them all here. Oh, and this is when we had to backtrack. Is then we had to go to Macaulay. Oh, this is the this is the part that pissed me off in the chapter. So the thing about FE4 is that it encourages like this is what makes me this is what bothered me the most about FE4 so far is that it 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 forces you it encourages you to push like these maps are like huge right but they but the incentive is to push as fast as you can over and and get each objective as fast as possible um which is, you know, it's it's a good way to balance these giant maps. And that's why you have a bunch of force units that can do hit and run. You can just rush and rush and rush as fast as you can. Um, but when you get to here, um, it kind of just throws that all out the window and you have to go backwards. And for, and I don't like that at all. I would, I would rather keep pushing this way because it feels more of like a progression. When you go backwards like this, um, it just... It just kind of ruins the whole sort of like I was already here, all my units were there, and I have to go all the way back. It's like <clears throat> backtracking so far ahead. Like it's not even just backtracking to like this castle. It's literally going from Anthony all the way down and all the way right to Macaulay. And when I first got to this, when I first figured this out, I was like, oh my god, are you kidding me right now? I have to go this far back. Oh. It was so frustrating. I was just so pissed because, um, because everyone was here, and I re I warped Levin over here so we can get to Aaron. Um. Oh, and then oh, the NPCs are stupid as fuck in this game, as per usual. Um. Yeah, NPCs are just dumb, man. They're dumb in every game. So I so I was around here. No, I got to here, and then Aaron came from here, or she's Fury in this patch. And so came all she was she was coming down. So I warped Levin over here, and I had him like right here. And then they the 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 fucking the Pegasus Knights who were trying to get to Levin and trying to rescue Levin just killed Levin. And I was like, what the fuck? I was so mad. Like apparently Aaron doesn't fight. Like Aaron doesn't fight Levin, but her 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 allies do. It makes no sense. It's really frustrating. So that was annoying. Anyway, so when he's warped there, I just kind of left him there. It was him, Aaron, Deirdre, and like Azel, I think. I think I had Azel trying to push up here, but that was pretty much it. So I had to backtrack here. Sylvia didn't really do much because, well, no, she hurt. Uh, no, she did actually a lot. Because when we got to here, when we got to Macaulay, this is the part that really started to frustrate me. Um, after the after this, because here. Um, this guy, like, Clement has a sleep. He has a sleep staff. And on top of that, there's these ballista guys who you can't reach at all. And you can't really use Aaron because A, she's down here, and B, she's a flyer, so she'll get owned anyway. And there's no rescuing in this game, which is really frustrating. Here, yeah, here's, the, here, here's my issue, is that I was trying to, like, weirdly bait. And I guess this is when Sylvia gets really useful because as a dancer, she doesn't, like, she doesn't dance on specific units. She actually has a central dance, where every it's, it's like a it's like everyone like any four units that aren't status like that aren't slept can get rejuvenated. So that was really useful. Um, so we get through here, um, and the ballista are kind of frustrating. I had I think I had Jamki and Madir and like Finn, who's just becoming a god at this point. Finn is becoming a monster. Um, and they're kind of going through here and you know what I could probably just start playing the fucking game <laughs> I literally could just do it at this point I don't know maybe maybe I'll see if Kyle's around and he can come with and, and play with me but LPing is just such a hassle I don't think I have the mindset for it to LP um, it's just hard to do, but yeah. So these, so these fucking guys are just teasing you, and it's like it's not a big deal, but you don't really know how to kill them, and then you kill Clement, and then they disappear. So they just vanish. Um, I'd rather have, I'd rather be able to fight them somehow, um, 
I think it would be interesting if you could loop if this tree was gone and you could loop around here. I think that would be fun. Just because like it's extra experience and it's, it's kind of it'd be kind of like nice to take those guys out. It's kind of it, it is it's just unfair how they're able to just pelt at you and they cannot be stopped at all. So I get what they were doing with like the whole th uh, like un un unkillable threat thing, but I don't know. It just seems kind of bullshit. It was kind of like a bullshit thing to have, um, you know, ballista guys and a sleep guy. It was like pretty brutal, but it wasn't a huge deal. The sleep didn't really do much, and I did have a silence. But the thing is, the Deidre was down here, and I was not about to get her up there. So it was mostly just dancing and then getting them over. I think Madeira died like fucking three times. <laughs> I had a, I had a safe state, and I was just like, oh my god, Madeira, could you stop dying, please? Because he kept dying every single time. Um, so let's see what the text was after we fought. Um, yeah, Fury is Aaron in this game. Or did, did, that just seems like two really huge differences in translations. Like, real big. Um, so then Levin talks with Aaron, and then they do whatever. They chat. Conquering Macaulay. Macaulay is no longer a problem. My next stop is the capital, Augusty. And then Chagall and Manfroy, like, dispute with each other. And then, uh, and then Chagall, I think we fought, we fought Chagall in this chapter, right? Yeah, Chagall is the big boss. So we fought him. And then the, a dark mage talks to Manfroy and says, Prince Curse got, got a th a assassinated. Prince Kurth got assassinated. <laughs> assassinated. Uh, and then, so they say it's interesting. So here's the interesting part. Of course he did. Uh, has Alvis consented to your proposal? Of course he did. He's got Loptusu blood flowing in his veins, and if that ever got out, they would burn him at the stake for being of Loptian descent. I just wonder if someone as arrogant as Alvis can keep quiet. So he is uh, this... He would get burned at the stake, and he is apparently really important to the lop tier resurrection thing. And then the Dark Mage is continuing his plotting with, All right, next we betray the king once you become emperor. To resurrect Lord Lop, lop <laughs> we'll need not only Alvis, but also that woman's daughter, which I'm assuming is Deirdre. I'm assuming Deirdre is here. Um, I, I think they need to kill... Is Alvis and Deirdre siblings? Is that what's going on here? I think that's what they're trying to... Yeah, I feel like... Is that what they're trying to do? Like, they're trying to set up? And every time you lose Deirdre, you just, like, get her back. Because <laughs> she's super important to the story. Um, and if you keep Eve, Eva and Alva alive, you get a night ring. And then uh, Chagall's alive, and then... And then Eldigan is like, he realizes that Sigurd literally just conquered the country he's from. And then Eldigan's like, um, I hear that Granville has dispatched official to each of our castles. Um, you're treating us like we were a tributary state. Did Granville take occupation of Augustria while I was away? You better answer good Sigurd. Um, and so basically they say they had no choice and that they were captured and then, you know, all of Augusti was like plotting against them. And so then Chagall and Eldigan go to Medino Castle, which is at the very north of Augusti. And um, then they just kind of chill there and that's the end of the chapter. So some important villager conversations. Um, someone, one of the, one of the villagers wishes that Eldigan was the king in Augustria. Um, and then each year, the blood each year, big towns like Augusti and Macaulay hold witch hunts and arrest a ton of people. That's construction going on outside, I think. So Levin and Sigurd, they went, and their conversation is like weird because like Sigurd kind of just almost pulls out the entire force because Levin was mad at him, which is weird. I don't know. Some of the writing here is just confusing and just odd. It just some of it doesn't seem supernatural and kind of like jokey at times, which is like, it's okay, but 
there's just some parts that are just weird and i can't tell if it's a translation issue or it's if it's not but i was i was playing the naga patch which is supposedly like way better it is way better um and there was just some odd parts and in terms of characters i'm not i can't read through all these fuck <laughs> i can't read through all these conversations um, but I will say that the, having the talk option is really cool. That is a really cool add-on um, to like see who you can talk to next. It's pretty nice. Um, so as for characters, I didn't go over Aira in chapter one. She's really solid, I think. She's really she's super fast. She has Astra, which is awesome, um, and she's just like she's just like a like a total offensive machine but she's just unmounted and that kind of really fucks her over uh and that's pretty much all i have on her there's beowulf who is a sword knight um who's a mercenary he's solid yeah he's a good i don't really know much about him he's solid uh levin who's a mage he's really good um and sylvia is fucking amazing she has a, first of all she has she's a fighting dancer and secondly she dances and it takes and it dances to everyone in her range so you can dance four people up to a time which is amazing she's like the best dancer in the entire franchise just because of that like no question she's the best and deirdre is super slow she's a total beast when it comes to fighting magicians but that's about it um and uh, Holland, who is the mercenary you fight in the chapter two arena, he is decent, I guess. I mean, you don't, you don't, you can deploy anyone you want in this game, so it's not really a big deal. He just seems kind of random, just kind of in there. Uh, but whatever, it is what it is. Actually, does he have conversations with people? He probably should. Here we go. Beating Holland in the arena. Uh, let's just look at Holland in the script here. Holland. Nope, it's just he's just some random arena fighter, so <laughs> okay. <laughs> and let's see where we are in the map here. So in the in the thing we we fought we fought Herhan, Machili, Anthony, Augusti. We didn't we didn't do Silvale or Medino, so that's what's happening next time in the third chapter, I think. And yeah, that's uh that's it. That's chapter two. Hmm. So yeah, the reason I just don't like this chapter is that you have to backtrack and I just don't like that. There's some bullshit parts where you have to, you know, deal with sort of impossible to kill enemies, which is not a huge issue, it's just kind of annoying. Um, I didn't get the pursuit ring with Arden, because <laughs> I always leave Arden at the castle. Uh, oh, Loxus, she's actually a really solid character too. She's another healer, which is great. Finn is turning into a monster. Um, I gave him the Paragon thing so he gets more experience and a Silver Lance and he's just getting great. He's just becoming fantastic. And in this map, I think it was Baldo who gives you the 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 plus five she the plus five uh, defense ring and I accidentally gave that to uh Quan. So now Quan's just a total like he's a turtle. <laughs> He he he's a he's a wall. He's a he's a mounted wall. And Aaron, who's I guess she's Aaron's solid. The Pegasus Knight map sprite is really weird, but she's a solid unit. I don't really mind uh, her. She she'll be useful, right? A flyer is always nice. But yeah, um, that's that's it for me in chapter two. Whew, I am fucking. It's hot in this room. But that was chapter two. Uh, so we cover chapter one and two in this uh, podcast. I'm going to see what happens. I'm going to try to record chapter three and see how that goes. See if uh, Kyle's around or anyone's around. Because I think that'd be kind of fun to record again just to see. Do some... Uh, I'm actually just talking out my ass. I might not do it. Now I'm just doodling on the map. Anyways, uh, I'm Gast. If you like this video, please leave a like and comment. And 